What's up, YouTube? It's Fitzbro, and welcome to my guide to the British forces for Company of Heroes 3. I'm going to be going through all of the buildings, all of the units, the techs, and a few tips along the way. So I hope you're here ready to learn about the British. And if you want to learn more about Company of Heroes, make sure you subscribe to the channel down below and leave me a comment on this video. I've got build order guides and a faction overview already available for the U.S. forces. And I've had players already telling me it's helping them get wins out on the ladder. So hope you come along for the fun. Let's dig in to the British forces. Now I've got the... Uh, the cheat commands mod pulled up here. I highly recommend downloading this on the Steam Workshop. You just add it and it's a game mode you can turn on for any skirmish game. And then you can give yourself infinite resources. You can spawn in units, all kinds of stuff. But it helps me with uh, when I first start learning a faction, just looking at everything that's, that's available and not worrying about capturing resources. Okay, so the headquarters for the British, you can train the Royal Engineer section. You actually start with one right at the very beginning of the game. And you can also train Vickers Machine Gun Team. Now, kind of crazy, you get a machine gun right out of the gate, unlike some of the other factions. It's a little bit uh, weaker than the other machine guns, because it is available in your tier one, but it could still can do suppression all the same a little bit less effective than some of the other factions, but it's pretty cool. You can get a machine gun right out of the gate. Now, your Royal Engineers, uh, they're equipped with these submachine guns. You can actually see if you look closely, which it tells you if you actually hover over the tooltip on it. And the way you want to use these is when you... Uh, if you're uh, fighting against an opponent, you want to get really close to them because they will do be quite effective. And let me, I can actually maybe be fancy enough. I can spawn in a unit here. Let's do a, uh, a how about a grenadier squad? So I'm going to spawn one in here and I'm going to make him enemy now. Let's see. Uh, let's see if I can remember how to do it. Uh, enemy. There we go. And so now... I can, oh, well, uh, my base is going to help fight it, but you can see, you get up nice and close, and they will use these submachine guns and be quite effective against these units. So, I uh, highly recommend uh, when you're fighting with your Royal Engineers, you want to close the distance. Don't stand far away, unless, of course, you know, if they got a flames there or something, you might not want to run right up on them, but they're quite deadly um, when you get up and come close, especially when you're in your main base and your machine guns fight as well. As well. <laughs> of course, uh, your Vickers machine gun, you're going to want to position uh, to suppress the enemy. You can see the radius if you hold right click down which way you're going to focus. Remember, you got to pick that up. So if they start flanking, you need to move faster than you think you need to because you got to pick that gun and put it back down. I like to set my Vickers up uh, in buildings a lot of times. Maybe a building in the middle of the map. If they have mortars, maybe not. Um, but for the most part, you're going to spend most of your early game making your mainline infantry. And let me show you those bad boys. So if we come on down here to our uh, section command post, you can actually start your game, build this very first thing, don't even train any other units, and you can go right into building. And let's do it so I can build instantly. There we go. You can go right into training your infantry section. It got 260 manpower. Okay, and these guys are absolutely badass. You can build three, four, Five of them, if you want to go crazy at the beginning of the game, you can expect, expect when you look at my British build order guide that will be coming out next on the channel, make sure you subscribe. I will be making these infantry right out of the gate. They're very, very good. Uh, and there's a few reasons why. If you look, take a look down here, um, you can get a rifle grenade. Sounds pretty good, like a, a ranged grenade. You can get the anti-tank snare grenade that you know and love already. Uh, of course, if you, if you purchase that package at the barracks. But or the section command post, you really don't even need to get this. You can get it in the later game if you want to. reason why you don't need to is you can upgrade these guys with three different abilities. So you don't have a scout with them. You don't have a sniper or a bazooka squad just to train. They're all in here. You want to save up those ammunition. Don't waste them on grenades or mines early on in the game because you can upgrade these to either get the recce package, you can get the boys anti-tank rifle package, or you can get the Bryn light machine gun. So let's show you each of those. Let me get two more. A new infantry there you go. Is ready for so battle. what you're going to do is, is you're going to specialize uh, your infantry section. So I'll get the recce package there. We'll get the 
anti-tank rifle package there, and we'll get to the light machine gun there. Now, of course, that's going to cost your munitions, so because of that, you want to secure munitions really early on the game when you're going to play British, British forces. I've even been going for, for munition points first in many situations where typically maybe you're going for fuel. Now, fuel's still great, of course, but you're going to want to be spending that to upgrade your uh, troops. Okay, so let's take a look at those different packages. So the uh, Recce package unlocks a pretty sweet ability. You always want to get at least one of these, I would say, because you can do this forward observer artillery barrage. And what it does is it calls it requisition for your main base howitzer. You've got this little howitzer that chills in your main base. When you call that out on the map, it will call in... Uh, an arty strike essentially which is really cool now it does have a range to it you can see here um i have to like i can only hit it that far or they'll have to move up so i'll go ahead and set it there and you'll see what it'll do they're going to run up and they're going to toss a grenade now be realize if you're suppressed or something you won't be able to do this but they'll see that and your opponent will have the ability to dodge it they're going to see that's coming in right and then from home it shoots off a shell and it will barrage and there you go you know you can see it's you know, it's going to be indirect fire, right? It's not going to be uh, precise, but it's pretty cool. For 45 munitions, you can call that in uh, as soon as you get the recce package. So pretty cool. You can also do the recon flare, the same as the Pathfinders from the U.S., um, as well as if you get your grenade package, you get some of those options. So the recce package, uh, pretty cool. It also uh, upgrades them with snipers, or uh, I think it's... I think they're Einfields specifically. Or, no, so, yep, they are. Yep, Lee Enfield rifle. So they're gonna be good at range. So now they're kind of like your 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 long range art calling artery specialist, right? My cat is really wants to say hi to, to YouTube. Say hello. This is Naboo. She is usually hanging out on the tower, but she really wants to get involved in Company of Heroes tonight. Um, your your next option, okay, is going to be the boy uh, the boys upgrade, right? We got the boys anti tank rifle package. This is basically a rifle that you could shoot at vehicles. Against light vehicles, it's extremely effective. Uh, but against, you can take down whole tanks if you got three, four squads of these into the late game. And let me actually even demonstrate it for you. I'm going to uh, spawn in. Let's just go with something, maybe something on the lighter side. Let's go. Uh, how about like a, what is this? Uh, we'll, just, we'll go with a, with a medium carrier. Maybe that'd be a good one. Let's do that. Okay, so we got this meteor, medium carrier that you might be going up against, right? And just for the sake of this, I'll do one-on-one, -on -one, okay? So I'm going to turn uh, this uh, medium carrier, make sure far enough from base. Yeah, I am. I'm going to turn him into the enemy. And you're going to see how well they, they do. They're so good. These boys' rifles, guarantee you, they're going to be nerfed. They're so strong. Um, okay, here we go. I'm going to turn him into an enemy. There we go. He is enemy now. Now watch this. I mean, this is one-on-one. -on -one. Imagine if you had two of these, or three of them, right? That, that, that's two shots there already. Take a look at that, bad boys. From head on, three shots and it's down. Pretty impressive. So that for that reason, early on, get infantry. Very first upgrade you're probably grabbing, like get that uh, boys, uh, the boys package, because it is so strong. It's a great AT, and... Uh, yeah, you're going to love it. So give that a try. You can also get this. Uh, you've got the bait. The increased accuracy against targets out of cover is passive. So that's another thing they get. Uh, and then we're going to see the final one, final form, the Bryn light machine gun. So this is, of course, going to be uh, equipped, equipped a light machine machine gun and going to be effective, of course, at just laying down plenty of fire on the opponent. Nothing too fancy with them. They're going to be great at anti-infantry. So those are basically your three different forms other than, you know, your just standard old unupgraded infantry section. So... Pretty cool. You've got all those options with them. They're very versatile. And because of these infantry being so strong and you want to make a lot of them, a lot of times you're going to, uh, you're going to eventually grab this training center to unlock your next tier. Um, and when you do that, if you, well, you, uh, you get that to, you, you see these upgrades in here, your infantry training. 
So this increases the accuracy damage, reload times, and makes them harder to hit. So you got a bunch of infantry. Get this bad boy. It's going to make all your infantry better. Uh, this is going to make all of your uh, your crews stronger. So those anti-tank guns you're going to see on the map, those mortars, those machine guns. Then you've got the light vehicle training, which is going to increase your light vehicles stats. Then your armored vehicles, uh, which is going to uh, improve your 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 uh, your heavily armored, medium and heavy vehicles. So those are your upgrades available there. It's not like the US where you've got three different support centers to choose. You just get the training center. It's one upgrade to get. But once you get it, you gotta remember to get some of these upgrades and they do cost resources, but don't forget about them. It's a good way to upgrade your units and make them even stronger. Uh, one thing about the, the British that's kind of cool and you might like, particularly if you're new to the game, is it's very one-dimensional tech-wise. You don't have to like make decisions whether to get that building or this building and, or skip this or that. You get your, you start out, you get your infantry section, right? And then you, right after that, you're gonna get your platoon command post, right? And then you can decide from there, after that, if you want to get your company command post, right? So it's just like, it's very linear. Now, there are some secret strategies, which I'll tell you a little bit about, that, that you can actually skip the later game, the tier three uh, co company command post. I'll show you that here in a second. But let's finish off here with our section command post. There's also the mortar that you know and love, nothing too fancy there. And then lastly, the Dingo Light Scout car. Now, this car is very vulnerable. So if you're someone prone to forget about a unit on the map, you might be careful about making this because it's going to die pretty easily. Of course, it can distribute medical supplies, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, it is timed, but it's something you can use out on the field. It's good yeah, anti vehicle. It can also, you can use it to uh, call in a forward artillery barrage. So you can actually look down on my tactical map in the bottom left corner there. You can see the range. It's pretty far. It's pretty far, so I could call in uh, a barrage right there. So there's a bunch of different, whether it's infantry or it's your vehicles. Pay attention to those special uh, abilities down here because the British really specialize on calling in this artillery or even off-map artillery or whatever it is. Okay, so those are um, all of those units. Uh, there's the, the grenade package, just so you can see it. I can, it, it's got pretty significant range, so unlike the other factions, you can shoot that grenade from pretty far away, which is pretty cool, but remember, you can probably save those munitions for other things, maybe calling in those barrages, etc., etc. Okay, let's go take a look at our platoon command post. This will be your light vehicles, your tier two uh, vehicles, shall we call it. And this is a little bit different uh, from the US faction. You've got your six pounder anti tank gun, it's your typical anti tank gun you, you, you know, have seen for the other factions. And then you've got your Humbered Armored Car. Now this is going to be a light vehicle for taking out infantry. So a light anti-infantry car, you can call in Smoke Barrage. So you could call in something like that. Again, pretty significant range on that. You can see. Is he going to do it? Yes, no. I think he's... Why did he not do it? That was weird. Didn't I call it in? Oh no, I swear it just ignored me and didn't do it. Maybe it will. There we go. Let's do it now. There it is. That was weird. Okay, so smoke barrage, and you can also mark an area uh, for uh, to highlight enemy uh, enemy units. So again, another decent recon vehicle, good anti infantry, a nice medium middle middle game. I don't make many of these other vehicles in the mid game. A lot of times, I'll make my anti anti tank gun, and then I'll save up my resources to go to tier three. The reason being. Because what I showed you earlier, the boys are so damn strong and they're so good at anti-tank that anything medium in the middle of the game, you just run up and kill them with your infantry section or retreat back home. It's pretty sweet. Uh, you also have your truck, which of course you can tow around uh, your gun if you want to, have a little speed. I don't do it a whole lot because like that animation right there takes forever to do, though you can move across the map quicker. Of course, during a team game, that might be better when it's a bigger map. Uh, but you can upgrade this to either have anti-air conversion, so I'll show you that version. And then you can also upgrade it, it to be a medical conversion. So there we go. Now we got medical conversion. You can heal, you can turn on, auto-reinforce out on the map, and use that to resupply. Your infantry heavy army, right? I said we're going to do a lot of infantry, so it could be really nice to have that towards the front line. Um, and use that for healing up your army. Okay, so the next two things you see here, these are still your medium tier uh, vehicles, your tanks, so similar to, similar to maybe your Chaffee or the uh, 
your Greyhound from the U.S. Forces. But you have to pay resources to unlock this tier, which is a little different. It's a little weird. So you pay these resources to unlock those vehicles. Now we have them. And you can train the Stuart. Uh, and you can train the Bishop. Now, the Stuart is a, a light tank. And I've used it a little bit. Uh, most of my viewers from my community have said that it's not worth it to make the Stuart because it's it costs a, a fair amount of fuel and you might as well with your anti-tank abilities you already have just wait for your tier three but uh it is a, a, a an okay medium tank it, it it's it is what it is it's 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 not you're not gonna you're not gonna love it i don't think but it's going to perform adequately as a mid, middle game uh medium tank now the bishop is pretty cool look at the range on this artillery it has look at that map i could shoot all the way to here with this, uh, you could you could spot make one of these. Just leave it in your base, and it'll protect all your territories. But you have to remember to call in these strikes, and then you can get veterancy for an armor-piercing barrage. So, pretty badass. So, like out of everything out of this tier, that's probably one of my favorite vehicles. I haven't used it a ton, but I think it's super cool to be able to barrage across the map. Of course, my favorite's gonna be the, the just your anti-tank guns. They only cost manpower, not gonna cost you any fuel, and then these are great for mortaring uh, capabilities. Now, let's get into the next tier, and then I'll talk about battle groups after that, which there's some special strategies you can do where you can maybe even skip tier three, which you're going to want to pay attention to. Okay, so for tier three, we're going to get that. Uh, our command post, let's build it. Uh, we've already taken up a lot of our real estate. Let's build it over here. Okay, let's get these guys out of the way. Okay, there we are. Company command post. Now, these are going to unlock your next tier of... of uh, of vehicles, of course. Now, this is, they're a little different from the U.S. forces. First of all, you can get to this foot guard section. They are basically a badass elite bazooka squad. So you can expect very good anti-tank capabilities. Of course, they're only going to cost manpower. It is expensive, 399 manpower. Might as well be 400. I don't know, 399. I usually don't make a ton of these just because... That's a lot of manpower. I'm usually spending my resources. I mean, just for, for, for perspective, that's more expensive than any of these other tanks. But of course, they're very effective infantry anti-tanks. So if they've got a bunch of like a, a bunch of anti-tank guns, maybe bringing this out there to deal with the other enemy uh, tanks on the map can be an effective method. Okay, so what's a little weird about them is their tanks are all considered medium tanks in their tier three now they're like their high-end medium tanks they're like the premium medium tanks you know they got the the leather leather chair leather interior they've got uh, a backup camera all that stuff but they are not going to be you know doing amazing going up against maybe some tigers out there maybe a panther out there right but i'll show you how you can get their heavy tanks it's not going to be here it's weird so you can get to the crusader which is what i would say it would be your go-to tank when you reach tier three get the crusader it's going to be a decent all around uh but you're going to need several of these to go up against uh german forces that might be uh, a heavy tier of a tank uh there's also the matilda now the matilda a lot of people say they don't like the matilda it's too slow it's expensive it does okay for the value you're going to spend on it um but you're i think one of your best options from here again like the previous tier you have to buy the next tier of vehicles is going to be your grant medium tank uh and uh, the 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 crusader does decent if you upgrade it with a six pounder gun it does really good but this bad boy you can rush down uh, anti-tank guns like one of these uh, or flank it or something and you can take it out it's got a great anti-infantry and anti-vehicle capabilities so where where the crusader is more of anti-tank the m3 grant is going to be anti-infantry and anti-tank and it'll be one of your best tank options without using your battle groups now, lastly, there is the 17-pounder, which comes with its own sweet escort there, but it comes with a catch. It's basically uh, what I would call the big chungus of anti-tank, uh, and you can see it. It's big. You can rotate it, but the downside, well, you can't move it without using your vehicle. Now, why this look? It's already a medical truck. You can use it on the front line. It could be helpful in that regards. But if you don't have a super definitive position, this could be quickly fall into the hands of the enemy. So personally, I would rather have a few of these positions throughout the map and some tanks versus having one of these. I can see them being particularly effective maybe in a team game or a position you really are bunkering in. Um, but just be aware of that, right? Uh, it's slow moving. You got to move it. 
et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And so those are all your vehicles and units in there. But last but not least is the withdrawal. Pretty cool. What this does, no other faction can do this. You can order vehicles to be withdrawn from the battlefield and it refunds their entire cost. Why is that particularly cool? Why would I want to get rid of my tanks? Well, maybe you played an extended earlier medium middle game, or maybe your strategy was to rush your enemy with a bunch of stewards and Hummer early on to make them maybe react with their own armor. And then boom, you're in tier three and you say, okay, thank you. Thank you for your service. We're going to pay you out and you send them off map and you're going to get refunded those resources. Now I've got infinite right now, but that's going to be your fuel back to instantly boom, start training some of those tier three units. And I think that's what's a super cool strategy you could possibly do with the British armor. Um, and expect I'll probably have some build orders that have something like this in the future. I don't think my first guide is going to be that fancy. I'm going to try to just be pretty straightforward for you. But I think there's so many capabilities with how you can use this. Uh, I'll call it a tech. Okay, so we talked about all the units and all the techs, but we need to talk about battle groups because the only way you're going to get the heavy tanks for the British are going to be through the battle groups. Let's show you which one specifically. So you've got the Indian, the British, and the British Air and Sea. Now I will say just right at a glance, these two are my favorite, the Indian and the British, with I'm usually going for the Indian battle group, but also the British battle group is a great one because of the tank options if you want to go with these heavy tanks. So let's dig into that one first so you can see these heavies. Okay. So, British Armored Battle Group, it's going to have, uh, and globally, globally increases the rate gain of experience for your vehicles. You're going to have a radio net, which is going to give you a sight rate of fire when active. So, some abilities for your uh, vehicles, as well as on the other side, you get engineer detachments. It's going to reduce the deployment and reinforce costs of those Royal Engineers. On those next tiers, you've got the Crusader AA medium tank. So here is that. So there's our Crusader. Now, take a look at this, um, where you would get... This is this could be a strategy where you decide to not even build uh, some of those uh, tier, those second tier tanks, because you could just get away with using that Crusader. That's going to perform similarly to your uh your your bishop here in the second tier it's going to be anti-infantry it's going to be anti-aircrafts uh but oh it's i'm sorry more of the steward if i said the bishop and then you also have in the next tier the big boys the churchill heavy tank or the black prince pretty cool so let's take a look at the big boy first there we go so the black prince costs six command points and uh, I'm going to call him in. He comes in from off the map. Boom. There he is. Take a look at that bad boy. He's anti-infantry. He's anti-tank. And he absolutely... He's going to be great. So that's how you get this heavy tank. It does have a crew to self-repair and out of combat once you get veterans who won. And I can actually reset my battle groups. Actually, I don't even need to do that. I'm just going to spawn it in so you can see it. The Churchill heavy tank. So... Here is our Churchill Crocodile Heavy Tank. Take a look at that bad boy. Uh, similar to the Black Prince, but the Black Prince being uh, the big chungus out of the tank crew. This is how you get your tanks. Now, that's going to be a little cheaper if you go that route, uh, the Churchill 4 Heavy Tank. But this is essentially the only way to get your heavies if you want them as the British. Now, they're quite strong tanks, so if you like... Having the big boys late in the game, you're going to want to go with this British Armored Battle Group. Now, on the other side, uh, you've got the Forward Repair Assembly, which allows your engineers to build repair depots out on the map. Pretty cool. And then you've got a Light Vehicle Withdraw and Refit, and it orders a Light Vehicle to be withdrawn from the battlefield. So, what's cool about this is, we, I already showed you, right? I showed, I showed you the Withdraw and Refit, so why is this a battle group? Well, if you get this at the beginning of the game... You could skip tier three altogether, right? We're going for the heavy tanks. I don't want those those high end medium tanks. You can refit. You can get that ability without ever even building this company command post. Get rid of these guys, refund them, and then save up to get your big boys uh, here from your command points. Now you can see their costs pretty expensive: six hundred ninety manpower, one hundred eighty fuel. Don't lose them. They're very expensive. 
Um, but that's a cool strategy you could possibly do. And then the last but not least, we've got the recon artillery. You can designate a recon loiter over the target area that calls an off-map artillery strike. So you can see uh, that. And then you can designate targets here with that one. Designate another recon loiter that will mark targets. So uh, a few other cool capabilities you can do. So a recon loiter or something. But there's not going to be any... Uh, there you go. There'll be a recon in artillery strikes and hostile targets, but there's nothing there right now. Okay. Now that's the armored battle group. Let's show you the other ones. Okay, battle groups. And let's take a look at the Indian. What is it shooting at? I don't even have any enemies there. I guess it's still just going to fire. <laughs> I thought it just specifically would fire. Oh, I already switched my battle group at if there were enemies in the area. Okay. So with this battle group, uh, this is... Oh, it did not change it there. Let's see. Maybe I can reset my battle groups. Oh, there we go. Maybe. Sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Uh, and now... Mm, is it gonna let me? I want to show you the Indian battle group, because it's really cool. Okay, I can show you the abilities here, I just can't show you it on here, but uh, it's okay. Um, so here is the Indian battle group, and it's got everything unlocked. And the ones I love to tech to, the Toad Heavy Mortar. This one is your tier one you're going to grab, and it brings in a truck that you can transform into be a medical truck right away, which is pretty sweet. And it's got this off map, or I'm sorry, this, this heavy mortar that can be manned. And look at the range on this. Again, uh, a, a sweet mortar. You can start shelling the opponent. This this faction is all about having those ca capabilities. You can switch it to be an anti-air anti vehicle as well. Um, so this makes it so you could skip even getting this truck at all, right? You could just call it in from this ability. So I usually like to get uh, the Toad Heavy Mortar uh, as far as one of my first pickups. Uh, the actual, the very first one you want to grab is on the, will be on the left side, is this Volunteer Infantry. It's really cool. Reduces the reinforcement cost and time of all infantry squads by 33%. So think of all the infantry I told you to open with. That's going to be super helpful with you having a uh, reduced cost and time. 33%. Great discounts. Better bargains every day here with Fitzbro. So grab that first. Get this second. After that, you're going to get your off-map airburst, uh, which is a, a barrage you can call in. Let's let's do... Oh, you need line of sight. So we'll call it in there. I'll get a little... Uh, I can't target HQ sections. I don't need to. It's, it's, a, it's an off-map air barrage. You get the idea. Airburst barrage, rather. Um, and then there is Valor is a improved offensive defense capabilities as infantry uh, as they take casualties. This is a tech you can get. I don't definitely do get this one a lot of times. I'll choose the other side, but it's something you can get. Pillage. I love this one. It Enemy infantry provides plus five munitions per squad member. Vehicles provide plus ten fuel. You get resources when you kill enemy units. So you're going to be rewarded for those kills you get on the map. Some other artillery barrages, you can get into artillery. And it, this allows your uh, engineers to build artillery emplacements, which can be really good, especially if you're holding up on a uh, somewhere. A perimeter monitor. This one is freaking awesome. So say I control like all of this land, right? This, right? And I activate this perimeter monitor. It will attack. It'll lay down a barrage anywhere our enemies are in territory. So if like enemies capping this, 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 like three or four territories, you'll see psh, Smoke comes down in all those areas, and barrages will hit all across the map. So this is a great way to zone the enemy out of your territory, and I really like this one. And the, I think a war cry infantry can cause enemy infantry to, squads to retreat at low health. So you can call that in. Pretty cool way to zone your enemy out. So that's the Indian battle group. Again, that's my favorite one. Oh, I, did, I forgot to include the Gurkha rifle section. Uh, I'll call that in just so you can see them. Uh, it's a, an elite squad. You can upgrade to either have some submachine gun or a light machine gun, and they have grenade package as well. And then you can also uh, increase the uh, rate of fire with their veterancy. So, uh, yep, and they've got Valor uh, passively. So that's another infantry. Look at all the infantry we have. Crazy, right? Okay, last but not least, let's talk about the... the British Land and Sea Battle Group. And we'll grab that. It's going to be here. Oh. It is going to be... Where did I put them? And people pinging me on Steam. Why are they doing that? Okay. It is... Battle groups. Helps click that. There it is. The the uh, British Air and Sea. Okay. 
So now you can see these. Now there's some okay options and maybe you can find a way to use them. Let me know your way that you like them. I like the Indian Battle Group personally or the Armored. So let's go through all these. You've got your Commandos you can call in. Uh, we've seen those before. The Commando units you can kind of expect what to see there. They're actually para-dropped. That's the only thing they have, I guess, para-dropped, because they're in C. Anti-tank recon loiter, which is really good, particularly in team games. Uh, supply surplus makes resource points can be upgraded with resource caches, and strategic points can be upgraded with field infirmaries. That's a pretty cool ability you can get. There we go. There's our... Uh, I can't even click him. Is that my paratrooper? Where is he? He's in there somewhere. Uh, it is. There's the commando. Grenades. You can also do high explosive demo charge. Okay. Conceal my smoke orders the squad to drop a smoke at their current position. You've got assault flares, which is going to eliminate all the uh, enemy frontline sectors with off map flares. So, and then you have increased uh, speed and offensive when active. A naval bombardment. So, you're going to call in a bombardment. A uh, blockade makes it so enemies can't capture neutral territories. Then you've got the Commando LMG. I'll just call them in, might as well. Uh, the Centaur medium tank, but we already have so many medium tanks. I mean, it's okay. I mean, it, it's a good tank. It's a good tank. To, it's, it's good to have, but is it better than going for those tier four ones or having some of the other capabilities? Uh, incendiary bombing run, and then your howitzer power para drop. So some cool things there i'm not saying they're terrible i'm just saying i like the indian battle group and the uh, armor personally okay guys with that i believe we've covered all the units all the upgrades all the battle groups for the british i hope you enjoyed this faction overview if you did make sure you subscribe to the channel because up next there's going to be my british build order guide that i am using as i'm grinding the 1v1 one quick search and if you join my discord link down in the description you can pick up my previous guides i've got my us build order guide and it should help you out if you're learning any of these allies factions and after we do all of this good stuff we're going to be digging into the axis so the wehrmacht we and the dac we're going to be figuring out everything about those factions and sharing with you i hope you guys enjoyed make sure you leave a comment like the video give me a thumbs up and i'll see you over on my next live stream twitch.tv slash fitzbro i'll see you there thanks for watching